Welcome to Logan Looks, and today Logan looks at human creation, which relates to the question, what can you see? And we're going to look at a couple of very famous paintings to see what we can perhaps see and learn about the meaning of human creation and the purpose and nature of what it is to be a human. The first one is the creation of Adam from the Sistine Chapel ceiling, one of the most famous of all images by Michelangelo, and this is one of several paintings of creation from the opening books of the Bible. And here, probably the most famous of all, is the creation of Adam by God. Now, the book Genesis, which Michelangelo is trying to illustrate, have two different accounts in the first two chapters, different authors. The first one goes like this, God said, let us make in our image, after our likeness. And so God created man in his own image. And there's been much speculation as to what this image might be. So what is an image? Well, of course, an image is a likeness. If you look into a mirror, you will see your physical image. But if we're talking about God, who is spiritual, not physical, it can't mean that. It must mean something else. And people have speculated, does it mean reason, we are like God, we are a re rational being, each one of us who can reason? Is it to do with our intelligence, the fact that we have free will? Is it our sense of moral duty, moral values, or could it perhaps be love? So what is it, does it mean to be created in God's image? Now, Michelangelo is rather <coughs> hamstrung here. He has no choice but to illustrate it as a physical similarity. But of course, God does not look as he is painted there, and so it has to be interpreted symbolically in terms of its true meaning. So what do we have? Well, on the left is Adam, and on the right is God. Now, God is pictured as an old man, which links to the fact that of the three parts of the Christian God, one is God the Father, and that fatherliness is indicated by his beard and grey hair. And you will see, on the left, is Adam. Now Adam is in many ways like him. If you imagine a line going down this divide here, then either side equally you can see arms going out, pointing more or less in the same direction. You can see heads turned towards each other. You can see the torsos, the upper body, parallel. The right leg of God and Adam also parallel. So remarkable similarity. So what does it mean? Well, what is Adam, first of all? Adam is a man, obviously. He's remarkably muscular. Great, strong biceps. He is a classical Greek hero, if you like, if it was in another, another context. And that's a symbol of perfection. Indeed, in Genesis chapter 1, it says, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So here is God's creation of humans, and it is very good. Nothing wrong with it at all. Note, pretty obviously, he is naked, and that may suggest that we, as the descendants of Adam, according to the Bible story, the fruit of his loins, as it were, are also involved in the understanding of being in the image of God. Adam is our representative. But he is not all muscle, he is also weak. Note this very powerful left elbow resting on the left knee, as if it needs support. Note also his head seems to be turning, but not being able to move his body. His eyes are looking out, yearning for the ability to have some effect on his body. There's a famous prayer by St. Augustine which goes, Thou hast made us for thyself, and our hearts find no rest until we rest in thee. So it suggests that creation is incomplete. We've got this great strong looking body, but there is weakness. Look at the left wrist. That is limp. He can't even hold his hand out straight. So there's something missing. He's got physical strength, but something is indeed lacking. Well, what is that? There's a second reference in Genesis from chapter 2, also of creation. And Michelangelo has the remarkable ability, I believe, of demonstrating both. We've already seen the creation in God's image represented physically. But also, in chapter 2, it says, God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils 
the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now here there was no breathing into nostrils, but this extraordinarily inventive meeting of the fingers, almost. There's this important little gap, symbolizing perhaps that God and man are different. We are not on the same level of God. There was a space between God's world, represented by this great purple mantle, and planet Earth down here. So we are there, created by God, but something is indeed missing until the breath comes. Instead of the breath, Michelangelo has this almost an electric charge type atmosphere. This was bef long before the discovery of electricity, but it's almost as if there's a spark of life coming across here to make Adam complete. So what is this spark? What is it that transforms Adam? Our second image is significantly different, powerfully different, as I hope we can see as we look, by William Blake, entitled Elohim, Creating Adam. Elohim, I mentioned this Hebrew plural word, plural word, literally meaning gods, but here used of God. Wow, look at the atmosphere, how different it is. William Blake regarded cold, detached reason as an enemy of imagination. Such impersonal reason and logic are thought to be the dark satanic mills of the famous hymn Jerusalem. And elsewhere, Blake wrote of a mythological character called Urizen, or Urizen, which is probably a pun of the words your reason. And Urizen is the personification of reason. reason. He's a broodful, brooding, wrathful, vengeful god who makes tyrannical laws that repress imagination. And Elohim here is one of the Hebrew names for God, and he regards Elohim as a type of Urizen, does Blake. According to Blake, the creator of this world is a very cruel being. So creation is a punishment, and man, human beings, are confined to the world of matter. Not of spirit, the world of matter, and are made subject to the laws of this material world. It's a bleak vision. Look at him. There is Elohim, stern, his bearded face there, no sign of love or kindness there at all, and he's a man, or a god rather, of authority. Huge wings, almost like that of an aircraft, flowing drapery coming up behind him, blowing hair, all suggesting free movement, power and control. And yet, below him is Adam, and Adam is denied movement. He is pinned to the earth from which he comes, preventing his spirit from soaring. And here, interestingly, is a snake, perhaps, the head of which, there's the tail, the head of which seems to come from the stomach or the middle of Adam himself. It anticipates the snake of Genesis chapter 3 that tempts Adam and Eve to sin. The cause of Adam's downfall is within Adam himself. Man is born to fail, if you like. Or possibly, if it's a worm, it's a symbol of mortality and death. Man is born to die. Either way, it's pretty grim reading. The sky, look at it, dark, threatening, powerful, all-encompassing. Man is doomed. So, this is the second chapter of Genesis illustrated here, man's creation from dust, because down below here is planet Earth. He's coming out from that Earth. He is from Earth. His left hand is gathering up a piece of Earth. The Hebrew word Adam, meaning man, comes from the Hebrew word Adamar, meaning Earth or ground. It shows his origin. Now, is it all doom? No. Have a look above. Look at these rays coming down. Rays of sunshine behind, but preventing the clouds, the dark clouds from dominating. There is some hope. And for Blake, who described himself as a worshipper of Christ, it is Christ in the New Testament who brings freedom from the repressive laws of the old. Interestingly, this gives an alternative explanation of evil in the world. One of the great problems that philosophers debate there's one explanation which comes from St. Augustine, which Michelangelo represents, that Adam starts off as perfect and then humans go wrong. Here, 
Another church father, Irenaeus, is named as the one giving rise to a theory that man is already created imperfect. And here he is, struggling. This is life in all its difficulties and the challenges with God's help to overcome it. So, contrasting images giving contrasting messages about the meaning of human existence.